this is, this is, this is. Welcome to it, everyone. It's going to be a good week. It already is a good week. Today's a good day. It's going to be a great week. We announced our new album last week on our birthday. MXPX turned 31 years old. And the big news is, of course, MXPX Find a Way Home. It'll be fully out August 25th. But we are launching pre-orders on Friday, July 21st at MXPX.com. Yep. I'm so excited. Uh, we've been working on this thing for a while. So it is uh, a lot to, it, it is great to get off my chest and get off my shoulders. Uh, but now a lot of the real work begins because now um, it's going to get really busy. It's going to get really busy. So um, I'm excited. If you haven't already seen the announcement, I'd love to play it for you guys. Anybody listening to the audio, it's still good. It's all about, you know, so you listen to it. So you, you'll hear the song and, and all that. But, um, I just wanted to say, you can always watch it on YouTube and actually get to see it. But you've probably already seen it. Who knows? Maybe you haven't. Let's get to it. Let me show you this. How did we make it this far? How did we learn to stay alive? How did my head not separate my body from my mind? How did the planets get aligned? How is it every single time? We make a record. You said, what is, sorry. <laughs> what? You, you said, what is? It's been a wild few years. The entire world may feel different. I feel different. You probably feel different. It's been a long and amazing journey. We're MXPX, and this is our next chapter. Find a way home. I'm not sure I know anything like I thought I knew before I thought I understood myself and I always wanted more But not today, today I'm busy And it's good you got me right where you want me Yes, exciting, exciting, exciting. Um, I'm so stoked. I'm so uh, ready for for the next chapter and for what we got going on. I'm, I'm so excited. So thank you guys. If you're part of this, if you want to be part of this, come along. Pre-order starts Friday, July 21st. We will be showing you guys, um, you know, vinyl, merch, things like that soon. Um, just stay tuned for that, of course. Um, yeah. Ooh, so many goodies. Yeah. Find a way home. Uh, can't wait to talk about it. I'm going to be talking about it all throughout, you know, the next month or so. Couple months, really. I mean, it'll be a while. So, wow. Got a racetrack going on out there. <laughs> we uh, were fresh back from uh, playing out in Trois Rivières at Festivois. And we brushed up on our French, and I'm feeling good about it. But, uh, yeah, the show was awesome. It almost, it was almost a disaster. Yeah, you would have heard about it if it really was. But there was there was a time where we thought we weren't going to be playing. And we were sitting in our, in our trailer, dressing room trailer, and it was just pouring down rain, just pouring, gully washers, pouring down rain, lightning thunder uh you know vulgar machines was literally about to go on and they took them off the stage sent them, sent them back to their room or their their trailer and uh and everybody was just waiting because it was lightning and, and the crowd is just waiting and we didn't know i, I was like for sure we're not going to cancel no way there's just no way i was thinking that all day like it's been raining off and on all day and you know, I was, uh, and for one, I was thinking, no one's showing up. Like, people aren't going to show up to this thing. This is crazy. And lo and behold, the place was packed. You know, I, and I know that it would it would have be, been even more packed. It was sold out. 
um, at 15,000 and, and it was, it was still full, absolutely full. Like you couldn't really tell a difference, but, but I know that I'm sure some people just didn't make it out because it was raining so hard, so bad, but there was a lot of people that came from far and wide all over, um, and drove like four hours, six hours, two hours, three hours. And, you know, they were already there. And so they had bought tickets. And so I was just like, please, I, I, you know, for the sake of people that drove so far and spent so much money on, on travel and, and accommodations, getting Airbnbs in the area, uh, I just was like, we can't, we can't not play. You know, we have to play. So finally, Vulgar Machines went on and they, they had a little bit of a shorter set, but it was good. And same, same with Face to Face. They went on, they sounded great. Uh, shortened their set and we did the same thing you know we we shortened our set and we still played a pretty good set it was like 45 50 minutes um, which is you know shorter than like the full full headline but you know we were just happy and everybody was just happy to get a show and to get you know get what they came for which was punk rock music so we we really delivered and and it's funny because it was just on the stage you know, if the wind wasn't going, you couldn't tell it was raining. So it wasn't raining when we went on stage, but but soon after we started playing, it just started downpouring in the audience and just just so much rain. So I just, you know, those people that were out there, much love to you. You guys really, really put, put yourselves through it just to, to be part of that event, and I hope you guys had a great time. We had a great time. We played uh, a bunch of my favorite songs. We had a we had, we had fun. It was uh, it was cool. We did have to we had to cut uh, can't keep waiting. We didn't play that one. We didn't play wrecking hotel rooms, which we were gonna do. Um, but you know we didn't do rolling strong. We were gonna do that. But um, you know we did a lot of ones that people really liked. So <laughs> we also didn't do unstoppable. We were gonna play unstoppable. We just had to cut a few things, and that was one of the ones that we we're like, well, people really came to see MXPX, so they want to see MXPX. But but. Um, you know, eventually we'll we'll do Unstoppable when we're up there. It'll happen. We we come to Quebec quite a bit. In fact, speaking of Quebec, Goldfinger is going to be up there in August. Um, August, like mid August, we're going to be up there. Um, I don't know the town or the name of the festival. You're just going to have to find out. But I'll be up there with Goldfinger. And then um, coming up in July, mid July, Goldfinger is going to be on the East Coast, Boston, and New York. If I'm saying that correctly. Uh, I will be there. Going to be a good time. That's mid-July. Um, I don't know the dates. But I do know I do know the dates for MXPX. MXPX is going to be at Furnace Fest in Birmingham, Alabama, September. That's a Friday night, September 22nd. And we're headlining uh, Furnace Fest, kicking it off, starting the party. And by that time, of course, the album will be out. Um we're going to have a really cool set list. I don't want to give too much away yet. It's early, but I guarantee you this will be a set list we'll never do at a normal club show. We'll never do at a normal MXPX show ever. Um, that's my goal. So uh, we're going to we're going to bring a special set to Furnace Fest because they've been trying to get us to play for years. And we're finally, finally able to do it and want to do it and... and you know, we're like, all right, okay, okay, we'll do it, we'll do it. So uh, it's it's the year of Find a Way Home. It's the era of Find a Way Home, not just a year. It's going to be more than that. But but um, Furnace Fest, September twenty second. If you don't already have tickets or you, you you're thinking about going and you're not sure, guarantee you that's going to be the best set because MXPX is a bonus on top of how many great bands are playing Friday. Um, if you're into hardcore, hate breed. They go on right before us. So you want to see a huge hardcore pit go on, you know, happening re literally right before MXPX. That's going to happen. Um, Reliant K and Berlin all happening right leading up to our set. So it's going to be uh, a nice, you know, a nice day of, of different sounding bands, but all bands that we love and that, like, I love Hatebreed. I love Anne Berlin. I love... Reliant K, we toured, we, we haven't toured with Hatebreed, but we've toured with the other guys, we've played with the other guys, we've played with Hatebreed at Warp Tour, so it kind of counts, they've been on Warp Tour the same year as us, so anyway, that Furnace Fest is going to go off, alright, uh, I'm just saying, 
Find a way home to Furnace Fest. Um, and then, of course, we're going to be in Vegas two nights, two days. It's probably going to be day. Uh, when we're your young fest, October 22 and 23, we'll be there. It's a Saturday, Sunday, I think. I don't really know, to be honest. You're going to have to, you're going to have to trust yourself on figuring that stuff out. Um, let's get into it. You guys, thank you. Uh, remember new album, super excited. Um, we've been working on the stuff. I'm going to be posting, you know, a lot more about it, obviously now, um, you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard out there for a pimp. Yeah. Um, let's go. Let's go. Let's go to Facebook, the, the Mike Herrera podcast Facebook group. If you're not already on it and you listen to this podcast and you want to be involved with the community, that seems to be the place where everybody talks and hangs out. Everywhere else is just a billboard, you know, hey, there's a new episode. But, every, but the Facebook group, people actually talk, and, and it's like a, a sounding board a little bit. Kind of like the MXPX Facebook group also is. Um, but um, so Missy Lewick. Is it Luke? Missy Luke or Missy Lewick? There's, a, there's a, an E in there. But she writes, have you seen any? And, and I wish I could show you the actual thing. But um, basically she, she posts a picture of an alien flying saucer an alien spacecraft a ufo or uh whatever they call them now what do they call them tom DeLong? he knows all the the terminology is it pd it's like uh something pda <laughs> i don't know <laughs> no it's not pda yeah, it might be but um anyway the question is have you seen any aliens basically and i haven't seen i, I i've I've thought I've seen aliens, but do I have I had an experience where I was like, yes, I've seen an alien? No. Now, do I believe in aliens? I don't not believe in aliens. Um, the world is such an in, insane place. It's so it's got so much history, so much lost history, that anybody that really thinks they know really what life is about, and you know, like. I, I guess in the big sense of what truth really is. I don't know if I trust that person, but, um, you know, there's just, there's just too many things that were, we were told as kids, like Santa Claus, right? We thought Santa Claus was real. A lot of us thought Santa Claus was real as a kid. And now we come to find out he's not real. And so that happens in a lot of ways, you know, throughout our lives. And and so to me to say there's no aliens, I, I can't say that. Now, do, is there proof? No, I don't think there's real proof. I think, I think it's hard because things disintegrate. Objects disintegrate. You know, you know the, the forest takes over log cabins that sit there in disrepair. You know, it'll just swallow up houses nature will just become itself again. And, and I think I think what I do believe is I think there's been ancient advanced civilizations over the, the millennia, over the history of the earth. And so many things could be true. So I don't know. Just because I think something's plausible doesn't mean I just believe it. But I, I feel like it's very plausible that there were ancient advanced civilizations. So what I mean by that is multiple apocalypses. So, so like the dinosaurs were an era of apocalypse, right? Uh, they had an apocalypse and then that was like the one that happened before we became, you know, humans like we are and civilization started building. They always say like, well, the dinosaurs were so long ago and all this. Y yeah, back and then before the dinosaurs is what I mean. There could be a whole nother civilization of humans or human-like people and and animals and different things and that's all possible and, and some people believe in giants and, and this and that I, I don't know maybe maybe there was giants when the dinosaurs were around and because the the climate was warmer back then the watershed wasn't broken right that's how you get the uh the flood story right the canopy of water just flooding the earth um all those things are possible so when it comes to aliens you know, we're seeing a lot in the news now about aliens, you know, the government retrieving alien spacecraft and having a 
actual lab and, and working on an actual alien with, you know, biological material. Yeah, I mean, you could say that a million times, but like it's it's hard to believe anything because we've been lied to by the government so many times over and over and over. They've poisoned people. They've they've done experiments and psych psychology experiments and drug experiments on people, you know, on not just people but but whole towns, you know, there's been CIA drug like they they drop they they like dropped acid into the, like the water supply of some small town just to see what would happen to the people like that's a real thing that's happened in our history our recent history of of humans and so to think that you know to think that there might be something out there we haven't that hasn't been proven or that we we don't know about yet of course there is i mean why wouldn't there be every time i'm surprised like you see a new movie and you're like wow they they I haven't seen that thing yet or whatever, you know, like it, there's just always something new. There's it, at the same time, there's nothing new under the sun. There's always something new because, because I just keep finding new things. It's just crazy. I guess it's not new, but it's new to me. It's new to you. It's new to whoever finds it. Right. So I, I think aliens could be absolutely plausible. I think aliens might be just us advanced versions of us in the past. So maybe we got to, what you know, a space civilization where, you know, everybody looked like the Poconacha punk, and we were all dressed in orange jumpsuits and and we cruised around on skateboards, but the skateboards hovered, and then all of a sudden a meteorite came out of the sky and just destroyed everything, and that was like a billion years ago, something like that, and that all became soup. And this and that. And then the dinosaurs was later than that, right? Like the dinosaurs is like another million, couple million years later. And and then after, you know, anything's possible, right? I, I went crazy with this question, but I'm just talking out of the, you know, things I've seen, like videos and documentaries I've watched here and there. But like nothing... It's not like I subscribe to any one thing or I've watched a whole lot of anything. Like, I haven't gotten deep down the rabbit hole, but why don't they let us, you know, really get deep into exploring the pyramids and exploring what happened in the Egypt and Africa? That, that whole area used to be very fertile, very, very much a green area, and now it's a desert. And that could happen here in America. It could happen anywhere. Because you give, it a, give a planet enough time and it's going to drastically change completely. So, yeah, anything's possible. I'm glad we live now where, you know, yes, we're dealing with some weird weather. But, like, nothing like what you see in the horror stories where it's just like you can't even go outside. It, it's insane. I don't know. Um, climate change, all that. I, I don't trust anyone. No, let's just put it that way. Either everybody's got an agenda, everybody's trying to manipulate you. I just say I don't trust you. Now, it's like, how can you not trust? Well, hey, you show me who you are, I don't trust you. All right. I don't trust, you know, I've always had a healthy, uh, not always, actually. I think I trusted a, a lot in my younger years, but but through my going into my adulthood and, and through that whole process, um, I've learned to be, be a little more skeptical. I, I can be as, as gullible as the next guy. Let's, let's face it. I, I get sucked into things here and there and get on this kick and this kick and, and whatever. But I've just found that, like, we just, as humans, you know, we go through routines and there's people that come in and out of our lives and, you know, we finally find out who we are and then, then that changes too. You know, like you just never know what's going to happen each each year, each decade, each each five-year span. Um, you know, I've said this before on the podcast, but, you know, every five years we we kind of regenerate all of our cells. All of our cells, you know, like because cells die inside you and new cells generate. And it's just like how do those memories transfer from 
the dead cell to the new cell. Like what is what's happening? Because your brain is cells, and those cells die every time I drink a, you know, a, an all night IPA. So <laughs> whatever, right? Um, how does that happen? I mean, there's just so much mystery in the world, and I think that's what a, why living is so fun and so interesting, and and at the same time, it's so heartbreaking and so sad and so hard a lot, you know. And when we choose to focus on one thing, that perpetu perpetuates. And we when we try to focus on other things, and, and that can perpetuate. So whenever I spend time on music, when I spend time on projects, that actually I start getting things done and things start happening. When I sit down and I do this podcast, at the beginning it's barely done. But towards the end of the whatever time, it's been like 20 minutes, I'm, I'm okay, all right, I'm almost done or whatever. But... Speaking of which, I'm going to do a couple, we'll play a couple uh, voicemails for you guys. And I didn't have time to do a Music Monday t this week, but I'll do a couple voicemails. And um, eventually we're going to get some guests on too, but, but for now, let's get some voicemails. Thank you guys. Who's first? Um, I've got a quick question. How tall is the Poconaccio Punk? Hmm. How tall is the Poconaccio Punk? That is a great question. In fact, I love this question. I, I've thought about it in the past, not very hard, but I always thought he was just like five foot, like about five feet, like five feet. It seems like as a grown poking at your punk man he's five feet tall now i would love to hear your thoughts listeners how tall do you think the poking at your punk is maybe he's like three feet tall maybe he's like this tiny human kind of humanoid creature that's not really a human he's from some i don't know right like maybe he is human i always thought he was human he just looks kind of funny um i never thought he was an alien and i still don't think he's an alien just because you see him on a planet he's not on earth so obviously he needs to find his way back home right um how tall is the poking at your punk i'm gonna go with like four foot nine four foot nine that's my final answer you guys tell me all right let's do another one hey mike brandon just uh reminiscing remember being a 14 year old kid rushing home from school firing up the old computer waiting to get online as dial up made all its crazy noises and then every day the first website i'd go to was mxpx and if you had told me then that i would one day be able to leave you a voicemail i would have been so excited probably would have peed a little bit but anyway Two questions for you. Uh, tattoo on your left forearm. It's uh, it's a circle. I remember being a kid, just studying those images of the band. Thought that was so awesome, and always wondered what it was. Maybe you could enlighten me. Along with that, on the cover. Love that album. Was a little uh, taken in by it, and loved the songs you had, especially No Brain. I remember learning that on my electric guitar and then singing into a hockey stick pretending it was a mic and anyway thought maybe you could just talk a little bit about on the cover what you remember of it what it was like recording it how it came to be um i thought i heard a rumor that you played some guitar on that album maybe you do on every album i don't know but thanks for taking my call thanks for what you do thanks for the music peace man brandon thanks for the call 14-year-old rushing home, getting on the computer. Man, that's that's good times right there. Um, let me just get into it. My, my tattoo. It's right here. Um, it's a, a Native American tattoo, actually. I, I just literally picked it out uh, off of the, the flash wall at the tattoo shop in... It was Tattoo Technique in Bremerton, Washington. Uh, that's also where I got my first tattoo, the Poconaccio Punk, on my arm. 
I got it before Poconaccio was released, so I definitely was the first person to get it. But um, so that tattoo, sorry, the Native American tattoo, it's um, it's a Northwest Indian art. It's like their their traditional art style, like a totem pole style, and it's a raven with a berry in its mouth, in its beak, and so it's in a circle. So the wing is on the bottom and the the eye is on the top. And I was just like, I, the reason why I I liked that tattoo is there was a seaweed, seaweed band, a band, the band called seaweed. They had an album that I loved and the artwork or something about it reminded me of like that style of artwork. There was something in there. Maybe it was a picture and it was something in the background and there was like a totem pole thing or, Whatever, whatever it was, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that's why I got that tattoo. Um, but I just, but I did just pick it off the, uh, out of the, off the flash wall um, at the shop. So it w- wasn't anything custom at all. And then funny story about that. My friend, Stefan Edgerton plays guitar for the descendants. You guys know him. He's played on MXP stuff, been on the podcast. Um, he has that same tattoo. He has the same tattoo as me. And he has it on his on his shoulder on his arm, you know, upper arm. And his is older. He got it probably well before I did. And I didn't know he got that tattoo. I didn't know he had that. And later on, when, in 1997, when we met and started hanging out, was when we were like comparing tattoos and looking at you know talking. And it's like, wow, that is so crazy that we both got that tattoo and we didn't know each other and didn't know. You know, I didn't know Stefan before that, and I didn't know, I didn't, I didn't see pictures. You know, I got into all and the Descendants, but I didn't know what they looked like until pretty much like '97, <laughs> pretty much then. So uh, maybe a little before then at that point. But um, anyway, okay. So yeah, that that's my tattoo um, right there on my left arm um, on the cover. No brain. Yeah, no brain was a. Uh, Technically, it was, I mean, I wrote the song, I think, for the most part, but that was a cootie song, but that we really never did anything with. So we were like, oh, let's let's do, let's cover that song to try to, like, get people to know about the cooties. Um, but on the cover was sort of like our, it was our third recording session, really. I mean, real recording. So you can't, kind of can count, like, sort of our first demos with Aaron Sprinkle, but then poking at you was was our first album recording session with Aaron Sprinkle. So that was our first one. So I kind of consider our first real one. And then Teenage Politics um, right after that. So it was um, the summer of 19, the summer of 1994, we recorded, is that right? No, 1993, we recorded Poconaccia. It came out. No, 94. It came out in 94. And then, so, so 94 summer, then we started our school year. It came out in the fall of that year, I'm pretty sure, just going off memory. And then we recorded Teenage Politics on spring break of 1995. That got released during the summertime, I think. And we recorded on the cover during the summertime. And so we were so new to all this recording, but we were doing it. We were, we were, we were in the studio and we were in Seattle. We were staying at people's houses. We weren't paying for hotels or anything. It was all super low budget, sleeping on floors, sleeping on couches. And, you know, that's what we did. As far as food goes, I mean, I don't remember spending a lot of money on food. We kind of had a little bit enough to like buy lunch and dinner and stuff like that, but yeah um we had a lot of our friends in hanging out and playing on the record and and yeah back in those days tom could barely play guitar you know he was hanging on by a thread because he was new at it um and i played you know the guitar bits on marie marie the blaster song marie marie so there's like a guitar solo in there and I, you know i was barely i could barely play it too but, um, you know, we did what we could. And, and so I, I played on a couple things, but mostly it was still Tom. Um, I wasn't, I was a little faster. Like I could get it, I could get it faster, tighter, quicker. But aside from that, like he, he would pull it off eventually and, and get it going. 
Um, but on the cover, you know, I, I just remember it sounded so much better in my head when I was listening to it in my memories than it actually did. It probably it didn't sound that great. It was pretty sloppy and pretty, pretty punk and pretty not, you know, it's just, we were always just trying to do the best we could and, and we were making a mess, making a mess of things. And, and, you know, obviously it didn't really matter because like we were kids just trying things and, and, and you as a 14 year old, you were not thinking about like, is this bass turned up enough and played well? And like, why is he singing out of tune? Like, it's not what comes to mind. And so like, it really worked for us. Uh, nowadays, I don't know, the critique is a little different, right? But uh, ultimately, I feel like as long as we're doing things we love and, and you, anybody out there as an artist, as a creative person, um, doing things you love, then that's going to, that's what's important. You know, it's not, it's not what people think about those things, right? It helps when they love them, though, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, it does. <laughs> All right, Brandon, thanks for the call. Uh, I'm going to do one more call and... Uh, I will see you guys next week. Hey, Mike. What's up? Todd here from Southwest Iowa. Long-time listener, third-time caller. Hmm. In fact, my last call was only a couple days ago, so I can understand if you want to <laughs> separate these calls out or whatever. Um, I guess I did. <laughs> but, uh, I thought of a totally unrelated question to my last one, but one that seemed appropriate to ask you. Following in your hallowed footsteps, I've decided to try to learn bass. Okay. I may be, you know, 20 some years older than you were, <laughs> but I'm trying nonetheless. Uh, I think learning music can be a good thing for one's, for one's mind. There's actually some studies that back that up. But anyway, my question for you, I'm following some lesson plans and things. I think it's going fine, but I wondered, what would be some of the best MXPX songs to start out with? And what would be the sort of, if you were going to try to teach someone who is new to bass an MXPX song or songs, what would they be? Okay. Thanks, Mike. I'll talk to you later. Peace. Thanks, Todd. Um, okay. Let's just start with that. Um, I guess it depends on your, your, if you're just starting out and you barely, you can't play at all. Let's start with one of the easiest songs we have, which is Heard That Sound. Heard That Sound is very easy. There's not much to it. There is, there's probably a couple bass runs, but you don't have to do them. Just stick to the root notes. Do, 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 do. That's it. And then there's one other part. Do, do, do. Do. basically i mean <laughs> you know we have like uh if you want to go faster than that and still fairly simple tomorrow's another day not a lot of bass runs tomorrow's another day starts do 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 you get some dynamics do 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 and then you just do, do on b g flat or f sharp depending on and then same with uh it's it's d flat or c sharp so c sharp see i always say flats because i'm in the bass head space and i think a lot of guitar players say sharps but it is the exact same thing so dun dun c sharp dun 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 e open e and then it just does that over and over b b f sharp f sharp c sharp c sharp e e and then at the very end you change e to f sharp again you know just like on the way up as a passing note um and then there there is the chorus that goes do do b do do uh, F sharp, do do, E E E E B B, F sharp, F sharp, E E E E, and the, I think, yeah, I think besides that, it's all dynamics and it's speed and 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 it's mostly just doing that B D D D D do 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 to E. So, I know not having a bass in my hand makes it almost worthless <laughs> as far as like showing you how to play it, but it's very simple. Uh, and then of course there's the, I always say, this is the first song I learned to play on bass when it's obviously not since I wrote it on our third album, but uh, 
Chick Magnet. Chick Magnet is a great song. Once you once you kind of learn how to play a little bit, it's still fairly easy to play, and it gets you moving around the neck more, and it gives you that rhythm. The rhythm and the dynamics is super important. If you can nail that, you're going to feel great about about your bass playing. Um, and then from there, oh man, it just goes up. Try out Rolling Strong once you once you feel confident in your bass playing. That's probably. Um, I mean, there's there's other songs like bass solo that have like a lot of bass stuff. Um, I like um, these are the times I'm living for. It's called the song's called These Are the Times, or the Times, off of Plans Within Plans. The Times that's got a great little bass line, Um, and then Sad Sad Song has a real cool bass line. It's slower. It's not. It's real like '50s style walk walks up and down and does some cool stuff. So. That's what I'd suggest for MXPX stuff to get going and have fun with. As far as you're actually learning, I'm sure you're, you got that covered. But anybody else listening, um, these days are so different. You know, how I learned was by ear, for one. Like, I, I started listening to the Violent Femmes, and those bass lines were walking. So I definitely incorporate that style into a lot of my runs. Um, it's Violent Femmes, uh, skate punk version. And then I took lessons um, pretty early on, the first six months. Um, Tim Birch was my teacher, and he he was a guitar player slash bass player, knew kind of just all stringed instruments, and was a great, great guy, really, really well done as far as, like, how he presented music to me. Um, triads. I le- so I learned some music theory, and I learned arpeggios and I learned scales and things like that and I took that for six months and then I I went off and I just wrote songs and and practiced that way so um I would say after if you're not proficient enough to just play your bass after six months try something different or you're not practicing enough something like that but it really shouldn't take too long all right man that I mean I hope that that helps a little bit um these days by the way these days YouTube um, definitely helps to get an actual teacher. There's still teachers out there. Jack Parker, if you're local in Bremerton area, Jack Parker, uh, guitar player, tumble down, you know, he gives lessons. And um, I know there's some few others too. Anyway, appreciate you guys. Till next time. Thank you for getting hyped about this record. Please tell everybody you know, tell all your friends, tell all your, your family. Even if they hate punk rock, they're gonna love this record because well, it's pretty. It's pretty fast, actually. They may they may hate it because it might be too fast. But um, there's gonna be a couple songs that won't be too fast for them. They'll, they're gonna love those. Um, yes. Did I give away too much? I don't want to give away too much. Hey, I'm gonna. We're, you're gonna start seeing things. You're gonna start seeing clips and snippets and little things here and there and and. You know, I hope you guys are excited about it because I am. And and I know you can only get so excited because you got real lives and you're doing your thing and you got things to do and jobs and kids and relationships and all of that. But, you know, all I ask is uh, if you need something to do and you need something to throw on in the background, find a way home and that, that that'll be available soon. And, and in the meantime, obviously, self-titled, all the stuff we've released lately, any of that uh, always is awesome to to get shares and, and likes on the Facebook and and all of the Instagrams and thread. We're on thread now. It's a new platform. Um, MXPXPX is on there because that's our Instagram name and it's tied to that. So it's MXPXPX on on threads and then Mike Herrera TD on threads for, you know, my personal stuff. Um, I don't have one. I don't have a threads for the podcast yet. I don't know if I need one. Do I need one? I don't know. You tell me. You tell me. Should I get on there with the podcast or just use my personal? I'll probably do both, but um, but apparently I can't make my own decisions as a, a human male adult. I have to ask you whether I should put a podcast profile up on Threads. All right. And if you're like, what is Threads? It's basically the Facebook slash Instagram version of Twitter. That's it. All right. Elon and and uh, Mark Zuckerberg are going to duke it out in the ring. I think they're going to do like a grudge match. I hope so anyway. I hope they do this like either it's like a boxing match or an MMA fight or something like that. What? Please bring it on. 
distract us, right? Distract, distract yourself with our new album if you're going to do that. But you can also call in. The number is 360-830-6660. Would love to hear from you. Um, let me know what you think about the new record. I know you don't, you don't know what to think about it, but I'm saying like some pre-thoughts maybe um, of what you think, maybe what you think about the, the launch. And by then, you'll have seen a few more items. All right. Thank you, guys. Peace out. Shout out to my boy, Bob McKnight. Check out his show, The Bob and Katie Show. A lot of butt stuff. Can't go wrong with that if you like that sign it, that, that sort of thing. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it could have been better um, if you like that sort of thing. All right. We love you, Bob, and I know you're listening.